day two. Okay, we played the moon team. I think I was the opener. So we can look at that one. So here's my second game. Against Karmar. And this is against Team Moon. And I make a better base layout. I had a bit of practice. And classical opening from both of us. This time I go get a creep. This is uh, basically the way that Focus and Lin open every game. So this is the meta I copy. I get the double solve, the shop, then I make the burrow. In the back. Um, I saw his demon, so I stay at home with my blade. I check out the moon wall with the grunt. Okay. He dusts me, so I suffer a mana burn. Okay. So a little bit awkward. But... He gets zoned in. So this was nice. Now, this kind of thing... You're not supposed to just give him a peon and make him level 2. And I just lost it like that. That's bad. Now, if, if, if I kill him, if he lets himself die, that's fine. I kill a level 2 now instead of a level 1. But yeah, there we go. And then I actually sent my grunt to like auto attack his uh, Ancient of War for a long time. So he got really hurt. But not good. He loses TP, but I lose a lot of lumber, peon, he gets level 2. And I don't really have a lot of stuff. So at this point I buy Staff of Teleport, so that if he attacks me, I can go home. I make my double tech. I've got three burrows soon. Not yet, but soon. And I have three grants. This is where I start doing the Beastmaster trick. Uh, blocking it. He could have hired it, but now he can't yet. He gets Staff, no boots, because people are saving boots these days. And it's working out. He doesn't get his Beastmaster yet. He does his Wind and Tier 3 first. So this is nice. He can't harass. Now let's look at this. He has one Demon against Grunt. My tech is all finished. And I don't have anything really that he can cancel. So at this moment, he is doing a solo Demon attack with Staff, no preservation. I can go home now. I don't need to keep blocking it. But let's say that he stays here and I start attacking this. Okay, I surround him. What's the status on my staff? I have it. I can use it. I should use it. I staff on launch. I lock him in. And he has to staff out. It's great. I can start my tech. Now, this is again where like my terrible micro in this match comes forward. Uncharacteristic mistake for anyone, including me. I can't get the grunt out. Terrible. Really, really bad. He gets XP, I lose Grunt Creeping. Now, let's talk about what we're at. He has no TP and he's got Staff. So I know what he's gonna do is having hired Beast, he's gonna go to the most relevant camp on the map, this one. And ever since I saw him walk with the Staff of Teleport to my base, I should have known that it will go that way. That means that I should send a Grunt there so that I can Staff there myself, considering I haven't used it yet. And if I do that, that I can stop him from taking it. He goes there. So I know he's going to go there. And I'm going to try and go there. But I'm going to be late. So by the time I get to the shop. My internal timer says. I know he's there. But I know I'm going to be late. If I went there. I would have killed an archer. But not the hero. Now I don't know what item he got. But there's a 1 out of 6 or 1 out of 5 chance. That he gets Book of the Dead. I didn't consider it actually. Okay, so we go here. Now, I had taught myself to do an early push, even with level 2 or 1 heroes, just to apply pressure, kill some moon ones. He does a quill beast that harass. I put this here and I see this. So I don't know where he is at. Now, I see him come with demon. The first thing I do is not clicking his demon right away, which I should. Okay. He summons book. This is very, very bad. I already sustained early lumber loss because of the peon death. And I never remade it, which I should. Uh, my bro isn't going to be done on time. Now, there's a few things I can do. First of all, I could have killed the quill beast with double peon hit. Secondly, I've got staff. But I forgot. I could staff home on my shop 
or on here or whatever. All I'm doing is using peons to block him from getting there with his heroes. It's nice, it's cute stuff. But the first thing I should have done is staff home. If I want to do that, control one blade, control two everything else, kill Moonwell with this army and then return. But at least blade will be at home attacking the skeletons. It's still bad. Anytime someone gets an early book of the dead against anyone, against undead, except against elf because they have wisp. But uh, you can still use it really well against their talents somewhere in the middle of the fight. But anytime someone gets a book of that that early, it's super OP. But I can still win or mitigate if I do the correct things. But I forgot I had staff. At this moment onwards, I'm like, oh my god, crisis. So I'm starting to attack, but he's got Moonwall's Orb of Venom. He kills all my bros, peons, and so on. It's bad. Then I surround his beast, but he surrounds me with book. I lose blade. It's GG. Again, not uh, you know a performance to be very happy about, but such is life. Micro was still bad here, but at least the flow of the game was better. Uh, and I know he got Book of the Dead, so it sounds kind of weird. But uh, at least it wasn't a tower rush like before. <laughs> that went like that, with like the most terrible kinds of unforced errors. I mean, the thing is, I don't often get stuff of Teleport Tinker Tinker. When you look at my preparations to the tournament, I've had two years of streaming by now, where I do basically double burrow four grants. I didn't care about the meta because I didn't uh, need to focus on the meta. I like making four grants, so I do. And then uh, when I was watching the tournament meta, and, and I know that I'm struggling with uh, tier 2 harass on my buildings because they're late. When I watch the tournament meta, I see every orc does one burrow. So I'm basically adopting it. Okay, disconnected from server. I swear, man, every time. Maintenance. So we're not going to see my win. I'll try again, but I guess GG. It's down. Okay. When I play one bro tech and people don't counterplay it, I'm not really being tested. So it has its own advantages and drawbacks. And I've played it maybe a hundred games over two years and never fully knowing how people are going to counter it in China. And so uh, when I suddenly don't play books and I suddenly play one bro tech and I suddenly start trying to buy staff of telly, it's not going to be as comfortable because I'm not going to be as good with it. Uh, and then, well, anyway, this was my two games uh, losses. And then in the third game, since we can't watch it now because Nettie's is down, maybe later. I play against TBC, the undead. I go Blade Shadow, Fast Expand, Double Beastry, Mass Raider. We have a bunch of skirmish, and every skirmish I kill a lot of units, and we won the game. Uh, why did you think no knights have put out Potom Hippo Rider? Was it banned because too OP? <laughs> no, I don't think that was the case. So, what is kind of cool that we beat TBC? Who I didn't know who it is, but he won like he he AK he all killed people, right? He won like three games against someone, two games against someone else. Yeah, he all killed Team Fly. But anyway, my here's my overall trip experience for Nostalgia Battlefield. I didn't know what I was gonna expect in terms of uh, how they take care of us, the tournament itself, the level of players. I thank you. I'm just happy Zai Zai was so helpful and was able to communicate with you despite the language barrier. Same feeling, Resi. I was lucky to have him. Yeah, I can't play on Netties from Netherlands, Kroka, because it's too laggy. Uh, I'm gonna play soon, but I just want to give my overall thoughts of nostalgia battlefield it was uh i left on 7 february i arrived on the 8th and i got back on the 13th uh there was one day of tourism for us 
and there was three days of the tournament. I didn't know what to expect in terms of food, hotel, people, playing level, my playing level, uh, conditions, everything. Greetings, friend. Thank you, dude. Uh, it was cold outside, but it was fun. There was snow. Uh, you know, I, I had a good sets of clothing. It was fine. We went to the world of ice and snow. Harbin is famous for it. They do ice sculpting. It was a nice tourism trip. Something different, new experiences. Uh, my wife came alongside with me as well. They had sculptures there of uh, Blizzard characters. Uther, Anubarak and so on. Uh, it, it was a nice... Uh, it was a nice touch. Uh, everyone went there, we got pictures and videos done, and I think you saw some of that on screen. Then the next day, early rise, early arrival, we get there, we do the draft, we do the mini game. Which, by the way, how good and how fast are you at voice recognition of Warcraft 3 voice lines? That was the game. Well, that's, that's right up my street, isn't it? I love uh, voice lines. So, we won the draft game, which is why we got to pick first player. I chose WFC because he was the only undead, and I figured for lineup diversity, uh, race diversity, it was uh, good to get an undead, rather than a second orc focus, or one of the two night elves that were there who were considered the top four players. So I went for undead. Uh, also because I figured human is my most difficult matchup, and I think human against elf can do pretty well as well, but undead can be pretty good against human on the right map. Then in the second rotation, I had a choice of a bunch of people that I didn't know and Shishi, who I used to practice with all the time. So, easy choice. I got lucky that they played really well. Uh, Shishi won five games, WFC won three, and I won one. Uh, it was an important win. We lost to Team TH in the finals, 0-3. So, my one win against TBC to set up the right maps, the right matchups, and the right uh, tempo in the winner bracket game it was important so i'm glad that i made a difference uh, a little bit more than half of my games were shit unfortunately for people but uh you know i'm not a full-time pro <laughs> so uh, I, I, i'm still marginally satisfied with that that i was able to win a game against someone who by the way had more than five wins in the tourney so that's pretty cool um for the rest, it was cool. It was fun to play in the tournament again. A lot of old feelings. Uh, it was fun to cheer for Shishi and WFC. And it was fun to watch all the other games. Even games that didn't involve me. I wasn't sure how the level was going to be. Was it going to feel significantly higher than back in the day? Lower? Um, or the same? Well, I think in some ways it felt the same. The amount of, uh, you know, the level of execution was uh, pretty similar so you can feel that they are playing as well as active pros were back in the day but there were some new tricks as well some exploits some of them were banned in the rules others may be playable uh, there was uh, some new tricks like a very heavy emphasis on zeppelin usage and yeah very solid meta and i th i think uh, everyone played at a, at a really high level so it was fun to watch and um, you know, when I came back, I was slightly biased, thinking that the level is going to be lower. Actually, in Europe, it's true, but uh, in Asia, it's not. So, uh, and then uh, anyway, we—I was actually pleased as peanuts that we made it to the grand finals, which meant that myself and my teammates we won prize money in 2017. Yeah, I didn't think I was ever going to play a tournament anymore. I accidentally pressed escape. I didn't think I was ever going to play a tournament anymore. And uh, there I went and played a small role. I know, it was a small role, but it was a role. In winning prize money in 2017, which was funny. Um, it was nice to see Moon again. Uh, Remind, also one of my friends back from the scene. Uh, Moon and Remind, I think uh, one of the ones I know a little bit better. I was in a team with Moon, and Remind is very outgoing, and uh, his English is pretty good. They go hand in hand as well. So, it was nice. Did an interview with Remind, I don't know if he uploaded it yet on his YouTube or anything. Yeah, and I picked the team, and it's not small, sure. But anyway, they still have to play the games.
So the the prize money was like uh, 13k US, but there's taxes going off and conversion rate, and also it gets split between three, and they give the teacher a little bit more, but I give Shishi more because uh, Shishi won more games. So we redistributed it to give more to the winner, which I think is fair enough. Grab your winners on YouTube. Let's watch it. Yeah, I prefer watching replays. Sorry. What kind of guy is Moon? Uh, kind of a loner. Kind. Funny. Not a lot of English, so definitely a language barrier for me, anyway. Um, he can be shy, but he can be like quite uh, surprising as well. He's a, he's a good guy, I think, uh, from what I can tell. Uh, he's always been kind to me, even though we were rivals. Helpful, even. Was it nice to see Lin again? You know, Lin and I were just rivals. There's there's a respect of his level, but we weren't buddies or anything. So was it cool to see Lin again? I mean, he looks cool, but <laughs> for the rest, it's not like we were friends. I'm not saying we're enemies. Like, n nothing ever happened to piss, piss off. It's just the level, you know? You play against each other's level of play, that's it. When, when we speak of, uh, you know, Remind... I had many conversations with him. Lin, no. Did you meet Lal Lyot? I don't know who it was. I don't know how he looks like. We didn't introduce. Actually, none of them come to talk to me except Remind and, well, my teammates for this tournament. Yeah, I think um, I think when I look at Lin's level before the tournament, like from replays, I feel like it was extremely high. And I expected him to win more games at the tournament. Like, I know he did well. He did better than me, obviously. But uh, I think there was also a small smidget of where he played a little bit worse than what he's capable of. Kirby, how did you do in the tour? Well, we got second. So that was nice. Greetings, friend. I agree, you mentioned some strats were banned. Curious what they are. Well, exploits. I'm not going to mention them because I don't want you guys to abuse them. Have you tried For Honor yet? No, but I did play Rune. It's similar, but it's 30 years older or something. I didn't see the double code I possess, no. I wasn't able to watch everything because uh, hotel internet's a little bit weak and... Sometimes I chose rest instead of staying at the venue. Why did you pick Naga in the other game? If you don't like her much, why did you pick her? Well, I was pretty much already dead. I needed a hero fast to kill archers. But it was pretty much over already. Um, what was this incident with the venue closed? In China, venues also always close by a certain time, no matter if the tournament is done or not. Was the hotel good? Not bad, actually. I was a little afraid we were going to be in a dump without heating, but uh, it was good. I've had some terrible experiences in China sometimes with it, but anyway, if that would have happened now, I would have certainly booked a new hotel or forced them to book a new hotel, but it was actually good. Green nice hotel breakfast spring. and decent uh, rooms. It was very, 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 very dirty, but I don't mind because I'm not going to eat an egg off of the floor. There was uh, like fruit peel and God knows what else on the floor. When we asked them to clean it, they said the vacuum cleaner is broken. When we asked them to broom it, they came and they took away 1% of it or something. <laughs> That's okay. I'm, I'm not going to live there. Oh, you know Rune, Senya Poet? Yeah. Uh, one other thing is like, it was like minus 10 degrees outside. Uh, but they did not purchase heating in the venue. So if you see me wearing my snowboarding coat every time on stream, it's because I was freezing. And when I asked if they have a heating, no. So you're expected to play a game of manual dexterity with your hands in freezing cold. 
not what I would do if I want to let people play the best possible Warcraft 3 that they can summon. What I'm actually very impressed about is the level of play that some of the other players were able to show. Tip top micro in that kind of cult is impressive. Uh, you know, the, all the bloody blocks you need, all the surrounds you need. And that's what I'm, what I'm saying is I am addicted to good conditions and I'm a bit fussy when it's not. I know it's reasonable for me to request that the venue takes care of the temperature. If it's freezing outside, maybe it doesn't need to be freezing inside. But I also know that some players don't give a damn. And that's a strength. That's a big strength. And it helps them. And it's my weakness. Did you see Sky? No, he didn't go there. What were your favorite games that you watched? Oh god, I love the Shishi versus Moon game, man. Mountain Giants versus Talents with Cyclone. Oh. Which player do you think played the best at Nostalgia? Well, first of all, respect for Moon. He played good. He won games. Uh, you know, he he's basically in the same situation as me. Maybe he plays a little bit more than me right now, but basically he's a retired player gone for a one-off. So, uh, impressed with that. Uh, I think Focus and Shishi both played out of their mind. And WFC as well. Like, WFC against Focus on TS? Pfft, was insane. That was so high level. I can honestly say that the Undead race developed more than all the other races in terms of level and strategy and micro compared to seven years ago. If, if, if I can see Orc play and I can see, okay, I see what you're doing there. Maybe I'm not currently super capable of it, but I can see what you're doing, Focus. I can see what you're doing, Lin. Uh, you know, it, it's uh, recognizable to me. I could do the same kinds of micro in my yeah, top shape. But when I see Undead, I'm like, <laughs> like never seen that. Like the way the WFC play, 120, insane. Uh, again, human, I've seen that before. Night up, I've seen that before. Undead improves a lot. So when I see WFC play like against Orc and just like saving every unit with one HP coil, the micro, the frost armor, the howl of terror, it's amazing. Yeah, I know. We should not be having to be in a winter jacket at the tournament venue, Disco Berth. But again, some of them played well with it, right? Like, I know it's... Yeah. Is your favorite Lotter character Grima? It's my favorite character to hate from Lotter. Grima. I only ever served you, my lord. Such a snake. But um, I gotta tell you guys, I came back to China. I came back from China on the 13th. I streamed Heroes tournament for two days straight. After that, uh, three days of Heroes 1v1 play. Happy to do it. Did feel a bit weird that we only have now to talk about it, but I'm glad we get to talk about it now. I wanna keep the schedule because it's uh, clear and consistent. Warcraft weekends, hot in, uh, in the week, but yeah. It was weird that we only get to talk about it now. So I'm glad we're doing this. If you have any questions, let me know. But we can always do after the next game as well, right? We can go play some games, maybe. So was it also that freezing cold in the player booth? Because you weren't wearing your jacket inside. I took my shoes off too. Uh, not something you do in the cold. But like, that's another thing. Okay, this is actually something about making yourself comfortable. The first few games I played there, I'm wearing my shoes. It's 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 constricting. Uh, it makes my legs feel less relaxed. It restricts blood flow, and that's gonna affect you. When I played the TBC game, I was like, "Let's get comfortable," you know, shoes off, coat off. It's cold. I don't care. I'm really just trying to like brainwash myself that that kind of temperature is exactly how I like it. Hell, if someone slapped me in the face with a raw fish smearing me with fish entrails and blood, I would have said, that's exactly what I wanted right now. Because I just about had it with my terrible play and I wanted to do better. And so it took some time to get fired up. I take my shoes off, you slap me with the fish, I bleed from the face, it's okay. That's what I want. 
that's my dream scenario for perfect conditions. It's cold. I want it to be cold. You shave my head? Please no. Yes. Shave my head. Let's play. And so that is that is a mind trick that probably the people who have the most mental fortitude do all the time. And I'm only occasionally able to summon that kind of mind tricks. But it is key. It's like uh, this one time I took a trip to US and uh, some guys promised they'll pick me up. They didn't. I land at some airport. I take a ferry to a ferry station and at 1 a.m. everyone's gone. And there I am by myself. I don't have money because I'm an idiot. I wasn't prepared for the trip. I don't have a phone that works. I just had two quarters that someone donated to me so I could use a public phone to call. Here I am, walking through the rain to try and find the road where the taxi would pick me up. Everything is getting soggy. My whole bag is soaking wet. I go to the taxi, they pick me up, and they say where to... Now, I do have a credit card, but I wasn't able to use that to phone call, obviously, so it was really those two freaking quarters that had to work. Otherwise, I won't make it anywhere. I'm, walk I'm gonna walk all night in United States at random black parking place, like random uh, dark parking places. Uh, there was not a soul inside, but if there was, I might be scared. I get picked up by a taxi, and uh, he's like, where to? I'm like, nearest place to sleep, I don't care where. Like, he brings me to a love motel. It's like, it's dirty. There are no amenities. I go in there, I ask, is there a morning call? The guy's like, no. Okay, I go to sleep. How long do I have? I have a watch, but no phone, no alarm clock, anything. It was, it was like 2014. So I'm like, sleep for only four hours then wake up because there's a tournament in the morning it worked it's insane i woke up exactly four hours later but no morning call no alarm right i go outside raining wet again everything gets wet i'm like i'm miserable i slept very short in a very dirty place i go to the tournament venue by bus i miss the bus by one minute I have to wait one hour it's raining just when i'm about at my lowest level of morale and I'm so depressed and I'm certain that this tournament is going to be a freaking disaster. I still have to make my way to New York uh, City Center. Just like when I'm thinking it's going to be an absolute disaster, no rest, everything is wet, I feel terrible, I'm probably getting sick. The sprinklers turn on. I mean, we're talking pouring rain here. Who turns on the sprinklers? I mean, I guess it's automated. I'm soaking wet. And it's like, it's going on my thighs and my knee. I'm like, that's just what I needed. It's like when it rains, it freaking pours. And at that moment onwards, I started laughing so hard. And I was like, it's just perfect. I'm gonna wait here for one hour. I have a tournament soon. I hate these guys who didn't pick me up. I was probably in mortal danger. I didn't sleep. And the sprinklers turned on in the pouring rain. <laughs> perfect. I get to the tournament. I'm like, I'm like besides myself with uh, exhaustion. It's like, it doesn't matter. Sprinklers, so. And then we, we played the uh, we played the tournament and we, uh, <laughs> you know, they were all American, so it was fine, but we won the tournament, but uh, it was close sometimes. But it was a valuable lesson in life and uh, a funny story to tell later. But you really need to find that point in yourself where when shit hits the fan you pretend that that's what you wanted it's uh it's a jedi mind trick oh yes and i had my first uh mexican food at uh, a train station it was terrible did i tell you i had a terrible meal as well that morning <laughs> Hey Gorby, were those Haozun gaming chairs comfortable in China? I was thinking of ordering them from China, lol. Yeah, they were comfortable. It was good chairs. They were trying to get me to like, uh, give free promo for them. So here we go. Uh, I think But you. in the practice area, we were on picnic chairs. Best story ever. <laughs> Thanks, Razzy. In the practice area, we were on picnic chairs, on picnic tables that shook. Uh, that's another funny thing. They said, uh, oh yeah, by the way, loser brackets. We're going to play them simultaneously with the stage matches off stream here in the practice area. I'm like, 
Are you serious? On picnic chairs, picnic tables, and I'm sitting on the chair here while everyone is shouting. They shout a lot, the Chinese bros. Everyone's shouting right next to me, and there's someone on my table, and he's shaking the table. It's like, what is this? It's like I'd rather play on stage. Well, I don't know. That's the kind of thing. Seriously, did you ever talk to those guys again to let them know how useless they were? Yeah, I did. I did. I wasn't the most tactful. I guess I still am not, so I let them know what I think. But I beat them in the tournament, so it's fine. Uh, the very long story short is that I enjoyed the tournament a lot. And a lot more than I thought I would as well. And uh, it was a very good experience. There were things that I wish were better. Uh, but there were enough things that were better than the past to make me uh, happily surprised. All right, loading the replay. Let's uh, let's run through the tournament, okay? And kind of uh, just follow my path through it. I'll put this here. And I'll put this here. So this is going to be 4x3 resolution. Because uh, that's the best we can do. Ready to work. And so, okay. I'm just going to explain you what was going through my mind. Playing these, what maybe issues I had or whatever.